Hi guys, how's it going? I'm Enrique and this is Enzyme Art TV. Today, we're gonna go over how to draw Batman. Now, Batman has been one of the more popular superheroes over the past few decades. What Batman taught us is that you don't have to be bitten by a spider, be subject of human experiment, or come from another planet in order to be a superhero. The unique ideology behind Batman teaches us that all you need is an infinite amount of money which you're willing to put toward kung fu and amazing gadgets to become a crime-fighting badass. Whether for this reason, or because he makes goth look hella swag, Batman has entranced artists and directors so long that there are several different tweaks to his look. So in this video, I'm specifically gonna go over the Adam West version of Batman, the Dark Knight from the movies, the 80s Dark Knight Returns comic book, the animated series Batman, and the Arkham Asylum versions of Batman. This video will be specifically covering Batman, so if you need a refresher course on superheroes in general, including anatomy information, I suggest you check out my video on how to draw superheroes. The method in which I approach drawing my Batman starts out like any other superhero drawing. First, start with the lines for gesture and pose. Second, find the joints and mark them. Third, define the mass around the limbs and body. Fourth, start defining the particular shapes of the anatomy. And last, decide where your light source is coming from. So, what is indication? And why do we use it? Well, think of it this way. In the real world, people are not really made of hard lines. We use lines in drawing to separate a subject from its background, to mimic hair, body wrinkles, and to separate the light and the shadow, or to mimic the way our eyes interpret light on a three-dimensional shape. However, in many cases, trying to show every mark or detail you see in a person using lines can make a human drawing quickly turn into a nightmare scarecrow. When something is important to show, but we don't want detail to dominate an area of the subject, we use indication. Indication just means that you don't use the entire shape that we know exists in a three-dimensional space. You just show as much as is necessary to suggest the shape. The viewer will fill in the rest using their mind. For example, indication is used a lot with muscles. Just putting a short line where a muscle begins and ends, or where the muscle curves, is enough to signal its presence without confusing or overwhelming the viewer. Contrast is the difference between the dark and the light values. A high contrast piece uses only the darkest dark and the lightest light without any midtones. High contrast drawings look like they might have been produced by a rubber stamp on paper. Compared to other superheroes, Batman is most likely to be drawn in high contrast due to his passion for hiding in the shadows. The way I like to make high contrast drawings is by starting with an entirely dark background then picking out my white values with a kneaded eraser or something like that. This might save you time, especially if the darkness dominates the majority of your piece. In most light settings, we encounter variations of tone. Rarely do we see something that's truly high contrast. Therefore, it's up to you to compromise the shapes as either light or dark. Using indication will keep a high contrast drawing from looking too much like a jumbled mosaic. Consider that a dark shadow is falling over the side of the human face. Instead of completely illuminating the entire white of the eye or the entire line on the edge of the eye, Try to find the least amount you can illuminate to suggest that there is indeed an eye there. Maybe you can light just the inner and outer corners with strategically placed glint points around the pupil for example. Using some sort of model or picture to study high contrast light patterns might help you a lot. Because of his distinctive ears and jawline combination, Batman luckily has a very identifiable silhouette. He was designed that way. The essentials to show in a high contrast of Batman are usually the sharp bat ears, the ruffled cape, and sometimes even the bat symbol on his chest. Now it's time to review the different styles of Batman that you can adhere to or mix and match in your own drawing. Sixties Batman was all about tights and finely drawn eyebrows. His ears were relatively short, the shape of his nose was more visible, and strangely enough, so were his eyebrow lines. His utility belt was wider than other models. Because 60s Batman was always down to rock out with his jock out, the cape fell to slightly below his knees and tapered into little W's at the end. Not to be confused with the Dark Knight movie series, the Dark Knight Returns Batman of the 1980s changed out his average frame for a hulking, roidy stature, including a wide jaw a chest to hip ratio that can make a professional wrestler cry in shame. His cape is longer with a more uneven finish, and in some drawings appears to split in two like bat wings would be. Now the animated series Batman. There are several variations of this Batman alone. 
I'm going to take a look at the most recent incarnation from 2001 to 2006. This version of Batman's silhouette kept an hourglass of a hulking chest frame, but his legs and hips are nicely more spindly, possibly to give the impression of an upper body strength with a balance by agility and swiftness of foot. He has gained some of the purple color hues which complement more attractive or at least less grotesque face. His ears are longer and there are rivets in both his cape and gloves. Dark Knight Batman suit from the recent trilogy looks like riveted armor, giving the illusion that now it actually does something besides making a fashion statement. The mask also has an inflexible look about it, and its angled shape gives Batman an even sterner look than before. Luckily, there are neck divots that let Batman turn his head while encased in this suit. That must have been hard to get used to after years of liberating spandex. You want to be able to turn your head. I'm sure me backing out of the driveway easier. His ears are decently long and come to sharp points. His cape is long with a flat finish. We all love the Arkham game series, and I have to admit on a design level, this is my favorite version of Batman for several reasons. Like the Dark Knight Returns Batman, this Batman is beefed out with an unachievably awesome body structure. But while his predecessor could be said to look a little bit wrinkly and bloated, Arkham Batman just has the stern jawline of a misunderstood hero ready to kick some Joker ass. The level of gadgetry is medium compared to the Dark Knight movie series, but he still has select rivets to suggest his costume doubles his armor. His elongated ears and jawline, as well as obtuse triangular point created by his mask, give him a very edgy look. Animated in the Bruce Timm style, Batman Beyond is more of an indication model of Batman than the finished Batman that we're used to seeing. The silhouette is familiar, with the longer ears and slender physique somewhat reminiscent of the animated series Batman we saw earlier. But unlike any model so far, this Batman is covered head to toe in black, with accents of red instead of gray or purple. His cape is shaped into two distinct sharp edged wing designs. His mask completely covers everything but the eerie glow of his eyes and partial indication of his nose and mouth creating a skull-like continence that gives Batman a somewhat creepy look we haven't really seen before. As we've seen, just by going over all these versions of Batman, one character can be stretched to fit many different purposes, just by changes to its design. I think practicing your drawing and indication skills on an easily recognizable character like Batman will help you find your strengths and weaknesses as an artist. Make your own version of this classic character and post it on our Facebook page. Thanks for watching and stay creative.